centuries ago, there was a poor yet magnanimous man named Abu Sayed, who lived right here in Cairo, and his cooking was legendary. He would open his home up to the people, and they would come and they would dine and they would enjoy his cuisine. People questioned where he was from. Some thought he was from the West, some thought he was from the East, but he was from Cairo. He had just been influenced by many different sources and brought all those in to his own unique style. Well, word got out about this Abu Sayed guy all the way to the Sultan. The Sultan decides, I've got to check out this guy's cuisine. So he disguises himself as a poor beggar and puts himself in the presence of Abu Sayed, who then invites him into his home where he dines off this this cuisine for the next two days, returns to the palace where he immediately requests for this man to come live with him at the palace and become his personal chef. So Abu Sayed is honored and of course accepts this, this very gracious offer by the Sultan to be his personal chef. Comes to the palace and he's cooking. The first couple of weeks are great, he's loving it, but then he becomes very homesick and he realizes, actually, you know, I really wish I wouldn't have been here. I wish I would have stayed home with my family. I miss everyone. So he begs the Sultan to go. The Sultan refuses. More time goes by, another request. Sultan again refuses. So Abu Sayyid is like, ah, screw this, I'm out of here. He flees. And now he has to be in hiding because he's, you know, basically just gone against the Sultan's word there. Uh, and but doesn't want his knowledge and his wisdom to be lost about all the glorious dishes that he's made. So he, he compiles those all into a recipe book, which is placed into hiding and is not discovered until hundreds of years later. I am now standing in front of the Abu Sayed restaurant, which has of course been influenced and inspired by this man and his recipes. I'm actually going to be meeting a local Cairo lady here, an Egyptian woman for a date, but she has requested that uh, not to appear on video. So. You'll know that I'm here on a date and I'm eating some amazing cuisine and you'll see me eating as well. And by the way, my name is Lennon. Thank you so much for checking it out. Let's go. Okay, our first dish has arrived, baba ganesh, which is eggplant and tahini served with some crispy bread. Okay, first taste of baba ganesh. Here we go. Looks like there's also some olive oil or some sort of, maybe that's part of the tahini sauce in there. Mmm. Mmm. I definitely get a lot of the roasted sesame. My date is very beautiful, but very shy. All right, now I've got it with some of this flatbread here. Mmm. That's better. I like that one. Okay, we had some more dishes show up. Um, my date was saying that the baba ganesh is actually Greek inspired and this one is also very Greek to me as well with the grape leaves. We've got a mixed grill. This is moussaka which is um, another eggplant with minced meat as well and we're served with some rice here. Okay I'm learning and as I learn I teach. This one is called mulke which is made from a green leaf similar to spinach and the cool backstory on this dish is that it was once popular but then for some reason was banned the public was not allowed to eat it and it was only a dish consumed by the sultan and by royalty however now it is once again allowed to be eaten by the common folks like us how do i do this one um so this one you can uh, use it as a dip a dip so i put the bread in bread. okay or you can put some rice in your plate and then put mm. okay. the, the mulchia on Try it with the dip. Wow, this looks good. Hmm. Honestly, I'm getting a lot of garlic. That's the main thing I'm tasting in this dish. Um, I guess the leaves do taste a bit like spinach, but it's hard to place my finger on it because I'm getting just massive amounts of garlic. I can explain how it's cooked. So they they boil the chicken broth, mm -hmm. and then uh, these leaves are minced very finely, and then they add the, the leaves to the chicken broth, and then they boil together. Uh, then in another pan, they fry the garlic mm. with uh, I think it's coriander, mm. um, and then when it's it's really um, frying and it's very hot, they just add it to the. So it makes Interesting. Like flesh. There's um, 
an Indian dish that sounds very similar to that, actually. Yeah, Indian food is, is also similar to Japanese. Mm. No Interesting. idea why. <laughs> I have no idea why either, but similar region, I guess. All right, I'm going to try one of these. Grape leaves and some rice in there. Definitely very Greek. That's nice. Mm. I forgot to dip it, but it's nice. Okay, this time with the dip. Mm -hmm. mm. That's like a yogurt. Um, I forget what it's called. <laughs> okay, this is what my plate looks like now that it's been filled up with a few different types of mixed meat. Um, I've got this one I think is lamb. I've got some sort of sausage thing going on here. This is the chicken one and I don't know, maybe lamb, maybe beef, something. I'm about to find out. I just learned that apparently if you're invited to dine at um, the house, home of, of the Egyptian family and you're served food, that you are expected to finish everything upon your plate. If you do not finish all the food that you are served, then any single women in that household will be unwed. That's a lot of pressure, so I'm gonna get started eating right now. Looks like hamburger to me. Hmm. Better than hamburger. Mm, this mincemeat one is good with the eggplant. That's good. You like it? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show you guys the texture of this one because it's actually a little bit slimy and as I pulled it up it was kind of reminding me a bit of like, to be honest, a loogie. However, it doesn't taste like that. But it has a little bit of that like sort of slippery, slimy, saliva type texture to it. Apparently the Japanese eat this molkea dish, which is interesting to me because the only other dish I've ever had that has this so same sort of loogie-like texture is another Japanese dish called natto, which is made out of um, a fermented bean. This one with the eggplants and the minced meat is really good. All the meat was really good. And um, this one I like too. All right, ladies, rest assured you will not die alone. I have cleared my plate. However, I am going in for seconds. We still have a lot of food left over. Back home after my date at Abu Syed. I recommend this place. I like it. It was both unique and authentic. Good place for first dates and I assume for families alike. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Peace and blessings to all of you from Egypt.